everything else. But I do hope that if you can, if you have the time, what please watch till the end, listen till the end. Uh, these go up typically the next day or within 48 hours onto my podcast mediums. Uh, so check those out. Uh, you can definitely check out nurac.org. I do daily Intel updates there. .org. I'm going to post it here in the comments so you can see how it's spelled. It's N-U-R-A-C.org. I typically post daily Intel updates. Uh, today there were some updates in there about the uh, whole Trump, Biden, uh, the Trump indictment, and then a little bit about a Biden and other things going on where uh, J.P. Morgan actually settled with uh, with the Epstein victims and uh, pretty crazy, pretty crazy time to be alive. I'll pull up that Nurac.org real quick. Pull it over into another tab, nurac.org. Just getting some quick housekeeping out of the way. But yeah, today's Intel update. It's uh, one of the first headlines here, and all these links are clickable, but the U.S. is preparing evacuation plans for American citizens in Taiwan. So... It's already rolling. If they're doing this, they know there is going to be a imminent strike against Taiwan by China. They know it's coming. It's probably going to come before the presidential election. My guess would be sometime at the end of this year. That would be my guess. And uh, there's part of part of what I posted there. The WEF calls for artificial intelligence to rewrite the Bible, create religions that are actually correct so something i i talked about before is that's you know artificial intelligence is going to start rewriting our books they're going to start doing that especially the older books especially the stuff that's non-pc that's not politically correct they're going to start rewriting all of that that's something to look out for you need to have hard copies now <laughs> You need to have Bibles on hand now. I know a lot of us do, but you need to make sure you have enough because you never know what state that the free world might get into that somebody may need a Bible or want a Bible. And you having plenty of them to give out will go a long way, not these AI-created, politically correct Bibles that they're going to end up coming out with. Mind you, things that the WEF, and we're going to go into them a little in here shortly, but the things that the WEF bring up, the, that's the World Economic Forum, you know, some of these things are a little further out and the, some of them are happening as we speak. It's a little mixture of all. And I highly encourage you, they do a meeting in Davos, uh, what, Swiss, Switzerland, every year. And they run podcasts. They run a podcast now. It's on major podcast platforms. But you definitely need to listen to them to understand where things are going. Though you may not disagree, I mean, you may not agree with it, and you may wholeheartedly disagree, you need to listen to where things are going because that's going to help you be prepared. You're not going to be blindsided by this BS. And that's, you don't want to be blindsided by it. So what we're going to get into tonight is digital currency. And I titled it, Digital currency, the free world's in. And the main thing you may be asking yourself, because you're probably hearing about it, this thing is annoying. How's it going to come about? What, what leads us to the digital currency? Where are we at right now? Where are we currently at? Well, it all starts... I mean, it, it can start further back, but I don't want to get into the weeds on this. But it starts with the Great Reset. You have to understand how all of this ties together. It all follows under this umbrella of control. It's going to be go global government control. You know, you, you're going to hear the World Economic Forum. The Great Reset was the title of the uh, 2020 World Economic Forum. You know, talking about COVID and everything. I'm sorry, it was 2021. Talking about COVID and uh, dealing with that virus and whatnot. 
and they come about and said there's just going to need to be a great reset, an economic reset. And they, you're going to notice if you listen to their things, they don't really talk about green, green energy, uh, climate friendly stuff. I mean, they, they kind of touch on it, but all of this has been reworded. And what you're going to find that the globalists do is they take, it's the same old thing. It's the same old philosophy. It's the same old theory. It's the same old plan. But once that plan becomes a dirty word, they return it into a new word. So now for like the green energy initiative or uh, the green new deal, you know, that was never passed through Congress is now termed sustainable development. That's what you're going to start hearing from now until they decide to change it again. Sustainable development. You've probably heard that. You've probably been hearing that. I would wager that more than likely you have. And they say that the Great Reset, you know, that conspiracy theories went wild, wild. And the conspiracy theories go, the COVID-19 pandemic was created by a secret group in order to seize control of the global economy. That lockdown restrictions were deliberately designed to induce economic meltdown. That's the conspiracy theory about the Great Reset. I want you to think about that. Right under our noses, we experienced the largest wealth transfer in history during this crisis. I mean, I look around and I ask, is this not what happened? Is the conspiracy theory not what happened already? It's already happened. The Great Reset is already in motion. It's going according to plan. That's what you need to understand. Like a lot of you, I know I'm not telling you anything. You already know this, but some of you are kind of half in, half out and don't know and still somewhat believe what the dinosaur media says. That's all under control. When they start parroting the same things, you know that it's under control, that there's agendas being pushed. But as I look around and say, has this not happened? I mean, where did all the economic stimulus money go? I mean, it didn't go to the small mom and pop shops that were shut down. It didn't go to them. So where did it go? Where did all that money go? And I find it funny how a lot of the essential companies, you know, the essential companies that were allowed to stay open, they had great ESG scores. They had fantastic ESG scores and they were termed essential. So they were allowed to stay open. And you'll notice that a lot of these were mega corporations. There was a few mom and pop sector shops that the world couldn't roll without. But most of the corporate companies and retail companies were deemed essential. And when these things happen, we here at the bottom are going to be the last to know until it's already sprung. The trap is already sprung, and that's where we're going to know, unless you start paying attention to what they're saying. And that's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to listen to the other side, and you're going to have to pay attention to what they're saying. That's why I drive out these intel reports daily. I put, I'm put. i only going to put information that I deem as important on there. Some of it is goofy fun because you have to keep a sense of humor with this stuff. You have to. That's why... A lot of people that get in shit situations in the military, they have humor, albeit gallows humor or whatever. You have to have some sort of sense of humor with this. That way it's not all doom and gloom to you and you, you can't be serious 24-7 uh, because some of this stuff doesn't even seem serious. Some of it could be a psyop. Everything in the, on the consumer market, everything that the consumers buy with that market, it's been flipped. The table has been flipped on it. Inflation is crazy high. Real estate, grocery bills, they're all through the roof now. All of it. I mean, it is crazy through the roof. Look at your grocery bill. 
we just got back from the grocery store and spent nearly two hundred dollars and on nothing not even enough to fill up the back of my wife's small suv nothing i mean people i don't know how some people make it you know with large families and stuff that you need you know four or five hundred dollars a week to feed a family i don't know how you do it i hope you're going to vote the right way i hope you're going to try to i mean we we have to try right even though a lot of these people we didn't vote them into office and i don't know that we can vote them out but everything has been flipped upside down and that's for a reason. They're doing everything they can to make it harder for us to live. So we'll have to depend on them for a change. They're going to come in and save us. We have to depend on the government. We have to depend on this new idea. One of my favorite sayings that I say about politics is politics is a thing that somebody has a solution for a problem that hasn't happened yet. And so they're gonna create the problem for their solution. That's politics in a nutshell. So we arrive at, and I touched on it, ESG scores. They are a test for social for a social credit system. And all of this ties into the digital currency. I'm, I'm painting a picture for you. I want you to follow along. Great reset and also ESG scores. What do they have to do with this? And like I said, they're, it's a litmus, litmus test for the social credit system. ESG stands for Economic Social Governments. Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, he is the pioneer of ESG scores. His company is. And he said in a video that was released, he said it back in uh, 2017. I want you to think about 2017. I want you to think about the turning point for what I'm about to say next. He said you have to force behavior. If you want change, you have to force the change. You have to force this behavior. And what in the world is a guy like Larry Fink? Who is he to say this? What behaviors are they forcing? Uh, well, they're forcing woke ideology, green initiatives, you know, sustainable, you name it. Companies like BlackRock that Larry Fink is the CEO of invest your 401ks, they invest your money, your savings, into woke country, companies makes you sick right but that's not all of it that is not all of it the thing about it is they turned these companies woke they forced the behavior that's what you need to realize they have all of these people's money all of their retirement savings, all of this money. They control tens of trillions in assets, more than the U.S.'s GDP per year, and invest in all of these companies. They buy controlling stakes in a lot of companies. I used to work for one of these companies, and I've seen the change in real time. I was there for five years. But they buy these controlling stakes, and guess what happens? Guess what happens when a company like this buys controlling states? Stakes. They get to either sit on the board or they get a say. Hmm. They control how that company runs. When you're on the investment board, when you're on the board of directors, because you own a large share of a company, you get to call the shots and how they do business and how they govern themselves. So they are forcing out Bud Budweiser, Bud Light, Anheuser Busch, all one and the same. Companies like this, it puts them between a rock and a hard place. You have to understand that. Now I'm not saying feel sorry for them, because this is what ne needs to happen. The consumers, us, the consumers are the last line of defense. So if we reject this notion and ideology, then what they're pushing stops. They're essentially circumventing Congress and government to push these crazy, hard leftist agendas. And they operate globally. You need to look at it. Larry Fink sits on the board of directors of the World Economic Forum, 
um, among other people. They're all interconnected. They all come up with this. So you better believe things that they're saying are going to trickle down into this. The artificial intelligence rewriting the Bibles and other religions, scripts, and texts. It's going to happen. Companies are going to be forced to. I'm sure a lot of companies that publish Bibles and other religious scripts are publicly traded. And I'm sure companies like Vanguard and BlackRock own controlling stakes in them. So they're circumventing Congress and pushing these leftist ideologies, and it's not being passed by government. The government is too slow. They don't understand what's happening. We can't discern the rhinos from the real Republicans or any of that. We can't discern any of them. We can't get things straight to even battle this because they won't even hear it out and they don't care. All they care is what's going into their wallet and making them look good to make their seats safe up there on the hill. That's all they want. I fully know that now. Most of them, I want to say 95% of the people sitting up on Capitol Hill care nothing, nothing about their constituents. Nothing. And so what has this done to us? I mean, that's why you're seeing wokeism everywhere. That's why you're seeing this. And we're about to cross the bridge and tie it into digital currency. So stay with me on this. But it's turned us into a crony capitalist economy. That's where it's regulated, it's under control, and only the big win. It's not true capitalism. The little guy can't go up here and compete with the big guys. They buy them out. They're basically controlling all the corporations they invest in. So the catch-22 here as well for the, for the company that gets invested in, they get the money. They need investments to keep turning. Companies don't sit on bankrolls of cash. They need operating costs. They need to borrow money. They need investors to invest, invest in them to grow bigger, to make more money. And so with this score, more people will invest in them. They have to do what they say. That's why you see all these companies going woke. So here we are. ESG scores work. The test is a pass. Flying colors, aside from a couple companies right now, Target, Bud Light, to name a few. But I, you want to you wanna know how it'll work? You want to test it yourself and see? I want you to go and look at all these companies' logos right now in this month of June, on June 12th, time this is being recorded. Go and look at these corporate companies' logos. Go and look at... Who has the rainbow flag, whatever, pride, whatever, you need to look at them and then you need to see if they're publicly traded. So you need to look up this company and you need to type in ESG score. Let's do it right now, real time. Cracker Barrel ESG score. Here we are. Cracker Barrel, old country store incorporated their esg risk rating is a 25.1 that's in the middle the lower the score the better the higher the worse it's no wonder why they come out woke folks if they're in a hard time and the restaurant industry right now is having a hard time they're gonna do this i wish i could i'll have to figure out a way that i can pull up the way stats have been rolling recently. But that's why you see them. It bends them over a barrel and they need these investments to keep going. So it's not a free market enterprise that you think it is. They're being forced into this via social credit score. ESG is a social credit score. You have to do good. And in the master's eyes, you have to do good to get a good score, to get more money, to run your business and grow. So you have to do this. You may not believe in woke ideology. You may not believe in certain climate friendly things and building electric cars and switching your entire fleet over to electric cars like Cadillac's doing that they're probably, and I hope they do, and it sucks to say that, go under because I don't want electric cars to succeed because it's another mode of control. And the people that are too dumb to realize that and say it's the future are idiots. 
plain and simple. They're idiots. They're the keeping up with the Joneses type, got to have the new hotness. Let me ask you something. How's your range and recharge rate? Yeah, I want to see you drive that hunk of, I want to see you drive that to Florida from where we are. About a six, seven hour trip. I want to see you do that. I want to see, I want to see you go up against a gasoline vehicle and drive to a certain point on Florida from both of you from point A to point B and let's see who gets there faster. Let's see who gets there more economically. Tell me how those uh, Tesla superchargers are treating you and how much you're having to pay and how much you're saving over having to buy gas. Look into that. That's a whole nother, we'll probably do that one next week. It ticks me off, I'm telling you. So yeah, it's working. ESG score, the social credit system is working. So now we arrive at digital currency. In order for digital currency to work, there has to be a demand. And the people are going to have to want it and accept it. And we're going to have to be broken down to a point that we all need it. So yeah, there's going to be a demand for it. I want you to think about this right now when you go and make purchases. I want you to start taking note at the places that are no longer accepting cash. And I want, to, want you to notice the frequency at how it's catching on and more and more businesses are going cashless and how employees look at you. And I've noticed it because I will cash out an allowance, if you will, every week to budget. And that's what I spend. It keeps me from going over because I'm not paying attention when you're swapping that card, when you're running that Apple pay or you're that Samsung pay or the Google pay, whatever. You're not paying attention and you're not keeping track of it versus money in the hand. It helps you keep track and, and on budget a lot better because when it's gone, you know you're, you're done. But I want you to keep track of it and like how the people look at you when you pay cash. They look at you with disgust. You might as well be wearing a red MAGA hat when you pay for something with cash now. You know what that's doing? You know why that is? It's creating a demand for a cashless society. It's been all over the interwebs and they don't quite come out and tell you that, but that's what it's doing. They have to create this demand for a cashless society. And why are all these businesses going cashless? Uh, ESG score, economic social governance. That is cashless society. That is a sustainable sustainable development cash is not sustainable it takes resources it takes polluting the earth and increasing carbon footprint to print and make paper that the cash you know is printed on and made by so they are forcing these companies to go cashless and this is creating a false demand wonder what the Fed thinks about that. I don't know. Have you heard of a central banking digital currency that's supposed to roll out later this month? It's priming us for it. There's a demand for a cashless society. The Fed prints our money. And another thing, since the topic of digital currency has come up, I've I've always said, as long as there's cryptocurrency, we won't go cashless. And if we do, they won't have a mode to control us because you can circumvent the cash and use crypto to get what you need. There's a lot of places accepting Bitcoin and Ethereum and Litecoin now. There's a lot of places accepting cryptocurrencies. A lot of people making a lot of money off cryptocurrencies. Not currently because the market's down, but there's still money to be made. Well, you know, I always said as long as it's here, we're, we're going to be safe from digital currency. But 
You know, just a few short weeks ago, the European Union and the United Kingdom have been investigating crypto firms because it's used for crimes like sex trafficking. Hmm, wonder what this stems from. Wonder, wonder if those companies are talking about going to a digital currency. But wait, there's more. Just last week, now here in the U.S., the SEC, you know, the one who uh, works on the stocks and regulations and investments and things like that and what the bond market they're now investigating binance and coinbase the two largest crypto brokers in the world investigating them this was enough to drop cryptocurrency futures because it's going on and i want to say i read something where coinbase users were frozen where they couldn't put money in that was in U.S. dollars, U.S. dollar denominations. The federal government is hard after them now. What does this mean? It means they are going to start controlling cryptocurrency. I know a lot of you don't understand cryptocurrency, but think of it as a very minimally regulated, pretty much unregulated stock on crack that in one day you could make a fortune or lose your butt. I've made money on cryptocurrency. I have lost money on cryptocurrency. But think of it as a unsecure stock, like penny slots, essentially. Now, the market stabilized. The more people that get involved, the market stabilized more and more. But back when I used to make, mess with it, I mean, you would be up and down. Like Bitcoin would be up a couple thousand and down a couple thousand within a day. You know, it. you just never knew where it was going to end on. It was literally like going to the casino and putting your money in slots. But the, the mystery, the mystery of cryptocurrency and, is, and especially Bitcoin is the blockchain. See, the thing about cryptocurrency is there's no one bank that holds all the coins. The coins are done in a trade. And so when you're mining it, from my best understanding, and I'm going, I'm overly simplifying this. When you're mining it, you are basically being a broker for those transactions. They're, the wallets, that's where the coins end up at. It's like an account, but it's called a wallet. They don't have your personal information on there. There's, they're really not tied, so there's no way to track it. And so when you're mining it, you're processing all of these transactions and you take a cut. That's how you make money mining Bitcoin. And supposedly it's going to run out, but this is how a lot of pretty much all the currencies work is they work on a blockchain system. Well, a lot of that is private technology. Nobody even knows who truly started Bitcoin. And that's the thing is the government is legally going to go after these things and seize it. They're, they're hard up for it. And they know that places like Coinbase and Binance, they have users' information. So they're going to turn, you know, our spooky boys loose on them, you know, our government hackers loose on them. And they're going to get a handle on crypto. This is going to happen, the best I know, within six months to maybe 18 months out, that we're going to see heavy heavy regulation of cryptocurrency and the government clamping down on it because if they can't figure it out they'll all but ban it we're going to see regulation on it it's coming like i said regulation probably six months to a year out and then the, when they figure out the blockchain is when it's going to really roll hard into digital currency i don't think they're going to outright ban it but they're going to seize control of all cryptocurrencies you're going to have to pretty much run it just like a stock and that's going to kill the whole trade on it because that's what makes it so alluring is you can literally go on there and be a millionaire within a week or two or a couple of days before or you could lose your ass on it but they'll probably reverse engineer the blockchain and they'll apply it to the Central banking digital currency, it'll be among all the all the central banks around the world. And so instead of individuals 
doing the mining and the transactions, it will be split between the central banks. That's what I foresee coming, that the central banks will uphold the blockchain system and they will do the mining, if you will. And they can't have unregulated trade, and that's what cryptocurrency is. It's an unregulated trade. The government doesn't like anything that's not regulated. It's not tyrannical enough for them. They got it. They got to have some control. You know, they just recently uh, implemented capital gains on it, and it's coming. There's more coming. You're, I guarantee you, there's already a bill in the works to regulate cryptocurrency. I guarantee you it's already in the works. It's probably already been submitted to committee and it'll probably pass with flying colors. You know why? Because they're going to say the drug smugglers use it. The fentanyl, you know, the cartels pushing the fentanyl use it. They're going to say the sex traffickers use it. The human traffickers use it. The terrorists use it to buy illegal weapons and firearms. The, you're going to see all of that come out about it. And it's going to be a unanimous party pass to regulate it. And it's going to make a lot of people that have gotten rich off this previous wealth transfer go broke. Because now the government will know how much money they're sitting on. Because a lot of them leave it sitting in the cryptocurrency. So the government can't see. Think of it as an offshore account. Well, now the government's going to get a little peek at what you're sitting on. And that's why you have seen a massive decline in cryptocurrency because people are cashing out and getting out of the game before it gets really, really bad. So once this happens, and all the while this has happened, we're going to be on an economic slide. This is what I foresee. It's not legal advice or anything like that, but we're going to be on this economic slide all the while this is happening. It's... It looks like this and this. It's like, hey, look over here while I'm doing this. But it's all tied together. So it'll slide in and then they'll push the digital currency. They're going to push it hard on us. To the point that I think they will make a the U.S. dollar, the actual physical dollar, worthless. So all of you sitting on a ton of cash and got it buried in your backyards and front yards and everything else, It'll all be worthless. You'll turn it in for the new digital currency. And then they are going to roll in a social credit system because all of this will happen. People will default on their assets. People will default on their homes, their cars, everything else. People will lose their butt, especially the crypto billionaires, millionaires, and you name it. They're going to lose their butt. They're going to be cashing out stuff and just losing things in general because a lot of them don't understand that this is going on. And you're going to have that happen. So you're going to have all these assets around that the banks own. And you're going to have more banks fail. I mean, I've been posting the past three days about hotels in San Francisco. I think there's like 15 now hotels defaulting, bankrupt, dunzo, hotels in San Francisco. Like the highest homeless rate in the country shouldn't have a problem renting out rooms, defaulting. Folks, we hadn't seen nothing yet. But with this social credit system that they roll out, it's going to be based on merit, your merit. You're going to have to be a woke person. You're going to have to wear the pride shirts. You can't be driving a nasty gasoline or diesel vehicle. You can forget that. Or gas is probably going to cost you $10, $20 a gallon, so you're not going to be getting far. And this is all worst case scenario, but I could see them taking this and running with it if nothing happens. But with the social credit system, they can limit how you spend your money. They can limit how you're going to get your money. Everything's going to be regulated. You need to think about that. Everything you buy will be regulated. Can you imagine numbers? You know, you're going to have a number cap on these things. So there's enough to go around and enough for everybody. Free trade as we know it is done. It's done. You want three gallons of milk? No, your limit will be one. To obtain that third gallon of milk, you're going to pay double. 
Oh, I'm sorry, for the second gallon, you're going to pay double. Then for the third gallon, you're going to have to pay quadruple if you really want it. And so it's going to take away your money. The government, via the central bank, will know all of your purchases. They'll know what you're buying. They'll have banks turn it into the central bank and they'll be able to look at your statement and audit everything. And they're going to know if you're going to get random money coming in here and there. Oh, we're going to have to tax that. And that's the other thing that nobody mentions is they're probably going to tax the crap once they can legally view how much we have in our accounts, just like Biden was trying to tax anything that we had in there, any transactions over $600. That's what it's going to get to. Kelly, on my live earlier that whenever I was, or my announcement for going live tonight was talking about the EU, like you can't spend over a thousand dollars there. I mean, that's what it's going to be here. You can't make a purchase over $600. Like you're going to have to get approval. You have to go through your bank and get approval. We'll have to check your social credit score. Sorry, you can't get that new washer. I know you can't wash your clothes, but you can't get that new green sustainable washer. Sorry. Guess you'll have to go back to doing it the old way. And oh yeah, don't use too much water. Maybe just spray something on there. You want to buy a gun or ammo? You want to buy a Second Amendment item? Forget it. <laughs> no. No, the crime rate in your area is too high. You cannot have a method to defend yourself. No, you need to call the police that have a three hour wait time. That's what you need. Our freedoms are gonna be gone. That's, and this is an extreme view. Somewhere in between, I hope not that last part because I hope a lot of us have a red line in the sand to when we say enough is enough, that we're not going to go along with this, that we're going to resist this, that we are going to go against this. That's what I hope. That's the hope. You know, hope is not a course of action. I know where my red line is. I know where my red line in the sand is. I know what my non-negotiables are. I know what the limit is. I'm not that old by any means. I know a lot of these Gen Zers think I'm ancient, but I've been aware for the past 15 years and I, my, I've been heightened and I notice change. I notice my surroundings. I notice things that are going on and the amount of change that has happened in the past four years is overwhelming and astounding. I think I drive this home every night that I go live and talk that pretty much every hobby I have has had the hand of government affecting it. So now more than ever, it is very important and vital that you vote. I know, I know what you're going to say. I know that the elections are stolen. I know, I know that there's election manipulation. I know that. And it's going to be probably even more manipulated via artificial intelligence. But we have to come together on this and we have to resist and we have to vote. We have to try to vote people in that we hope can help us. That they say they're going to and we have to start holding them accountable. I don't care if you like them and like their character. You need to look uh, somebody, Jennifer with Chattooga County sent me a scorecard for Georgia. And I was very surprised at what some of uh, some of the representatives that I like were following on this scorecard. Now they're going to claim BS and have their reasons and excuses, whatever. I don't care. But I was very surprised. And that's the thing is we need more people doing these scorecards and keeping up with the way they vote because they think they can slide a hand it under the rug. They think they can just slide it over and they don't listen to their constituents. And we need to definitely keep up with that and we need to hold them accountable and say, I put you in this office to do a job and you're not doing that job. You're not listening to me. And you know what? If you don't start listening to me in a few short years, we're going to find another candidate to run against you and whip your ass and put somebody that's going to do what we say in there. And we're going to do this over 
and over and over until we get it right. That's what we need to say. That's what we need to do to them. That's the point that we need to drive home to these people. And I hope you feel the same way I do, because a lot of people that I really trusted in have let me down. I know. A lot of them. They've let me down. And they've been in office for a little while now, so they need to go. That We need fresh blood in there. We need to churn the cycle at least once a decade, at least, if not more, if not a seven-year cycle. That we need to churn these people out and only keep a few from the previous cycle. Because we got people in there that are ancient in the U.S. Congress. We got senators that have been in there 10, 15 years longer than I've been alive. We don't need lifetime politicians. But we have to hold them accountable. Because if the left sees us doing it, they're going to do it. A lot of these moderate, middle-of-the-road leftists are not your enemy. They don't like what they're doing, but they'll die before they vote Republican. So the best case scenario and what I hope for is they don't vote. I'm hoping that this time around that they're just sick enough that they just can't garner the numbers to go against the turnout that we need to happen. And the ones who are sick and tired swallow their pride and vote the way that they hope that it'll help the country. But I'm not telling you that Republicans are going to save you because they're not. It's just another side to the same coin. That's where the grassroots movement comes in. We need people that are going to go in there and shake things up. I thought we had one here in Georgia. Looks like I was wrong. We need to hold these people accountable. That's the only way we can stop without kinetic actions what's coming, what they're doing. We need people like us to go up there and do something about it. We don't need these people that own multi-million dollar, billion dollar companies up there running it or, you know, that they they get to Wall Street and all of a sudden they're stock trading experts. We don't need them. I'd rather have somebody go to Congress that has no clue how freaking stocks work. They have no clue in trading it. They could care less. Because those are the people that are going to pass regulation against congressional members and Senate members and presidents and people in cabinets from insider trading. We have that law for a reason, but it's running rampant and it's making these people mega rich that they're going in with literally pennies and coming out with trillions of dollars in assets. It's sickening. But don't feel bad if you push a candidate and they go up there and they don't do the job, then it's time to get them out. You give them a chance to explain to you. If they don't explain to you, then it's time to get them out. It's time to find somebody else. And like I said, don't be afraid. We're going to do this cycle. We're going to repeat this cycle until we get it right. That's where we need to be. I want to iterate that. I hope with this presidency or election that we can elect somebody that's going to turn us around from it, but I think the military machine has too big of a hold on us that the uh, military contract, you know, the weapons design companies and all that have too big of a hold that we're going to go into war. And that you need to think about this because they're going to send your children to die. This thing pops off with China. If we don't help our allies, we look weak. And if we do, there's going to be a draft. And you're not just your sons. I say children. Your daughters will go too. Women have an equal role in the military now. The draft is not going to... My dad went through the draft. He can tell you all about it. It's not going to matter if you're a trust fund baby or you're near homeless. The draft will happen and you'll go and you will probably die. And they're going to send your kids to die. You think they're going to send their kids? No way. No how. 
That's what pisses me off the most. It's one thing if you sign up. It's another if you're forced. It's another if you're not that personality that, that you don't have that warrior spirit. And I think a lot of women lack that. Not to be misogynistic or anything like that, but it's the truth. There is not many, I'm going to say 98 to 99% of women cannot outfight one man. Not going to happen. Not without an advantage. But they're going to send them. A draft will happen. You look at it now, military recruitment is at an all-time low. They don't have enough people to fight this war. They have turned our military into this communist political machine that all of the good, experienced people have either gotten out or they're on their way out. Not to mention the mandates. That they lost a lot of good people. All right, I will touch on some of your comments now. I appreciate y'all for coming in. I hope it wasn't too hard of a truth bomb for a lot of you. Looks like quite a few of you stuck with me through this. Drop a comment if you agree. However you're viewing this. Because it's not just going to be on the Facebook Live. It's going to be on other uh, platforms. Like I always release it. Rumble, uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Drop a review. Drop a comment if you agree with what I'm saying. If you want to stop this. It's not about just being political and voting one certain way, but you really need to pay attention to who you're going to vote for. You really need to hold them accountable, even if you didn't vote for them. Saying words like, I will make it my life's duty to see you out of that office is going to put that in the back of their mind. Because there's going to be other people that are willing to work with you on getting them out of office. That's what needs to happen. Hold them accountable. It's not that I want you to do a certain favor or do a certain way. I want you to listen to the consensus of the people that you represent. I don't care what whoever in Colorado is doing, whoever you know, DeSantis and them are doing in Florida. If that is the will of the people that you represent, that is what you need to do. That's what you were placed there to do. Even if you disagree with the consensus of the people, it's not about you. It's not about you. The people put you there to represent the fight that they want to happen. That's what you need to realize. Sharon says, watching. Thank you. Kingdom Lum. Digital IDs for universal health, biometrics, money, ESG control. Yeah. Brian Kemp, push the digital IDs. Can you? That could be a podcast in and of itself with the wrongs that he's done this country and all the foreign, mainly Chinese companies that he has brought to Georgia. I see it here in Dalton. He's brought several foreign entity, namely Chinese, to our county and our surrounding area. Kingdom Lum, correct. It's your money. You choose how to spend it. Yeah, that's the way it should be. That's the way it was meant to be. We need to go back to the gold standard. We need to be paid in gold. That's Back in the day, that's how people were paid. Kingdom Lum, cryptocracy, hand in hand with our governments. Yeah, government control. Also Kingdom Lum. Ah, but you can't shut off the gas guzzlers, bro. With electric and the internet of things, you could be blocked from driving to Florida in the first place. Yeah, yeah. The CSG is not, unless we do something, unless we get Congress on board, unless people start appealing, and I see nobody pushing it. I mean, I see governors like DeSantis. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably touch on that at a later date about a lot of the election stuff. I kind of had some conversations with several people today on it, and I feel like, Maybe I should discuss where I am and get it out in the open, but I I don't have enough time tonight, and I don't want to keep many of you much longer. But, yeah, you know, certain governors are passing, you know, things to combat ESG score and whatnot and crypto dollars. But the, the sad truth of the matter is ever since the Civil War, the federal government overrides the states, you know. It's just the way it is. 
And so we do have to focus there, even though you want to definitely focus on your local and state government as well. Can you want to pay them with cash? You are correct. I get it quite a bit. And he's talking about the way people act towards me whenever I pay with cash. And it seems hardly anyone can count back change because the this has been the plan all along. They're not going to teach kids how to count back change. You'd be good to get these later Gen Zers to even know how much a quarter represents. They don't even, they think a quarter is just a name. They don't know that it's a quarter dollar because they don't know fractions. It's a disturbing time. I mean, don't even get me started on these. Like you go and see them now and they're socially awkward because they're, they live their whole life communicating via this, not what we're doing here. Not that we're, or, we are orally communicating. We, we actually talk and we actually look at each other in the eye and face to face and talk. They don't do that. They don't do that. Brian, you know, I always got my MAGA hat on. Yeah, I do, brother. I know you always do. I know you do, man. I'm hoping to see you soon. I want to pick your brain on some things going on. Not sure if you even know what's going on, but there's I'm a little I'm a little disgusted with the politicians in our area. A lot of them. A lot of the big names too. A little disgusted with them with the way they've been voting on things. Especially when I did a lot of work to get them where they are. Kingdom Lime, regulations mostly equal government control. Oh yeah, for sure. You can't get paid without the government getting paid. That's the rule. The king allows you to make money, but he's got to get a cut. Also, Kingdom Love, I truly think a lot of people just can't fathom what you're saying, or they think it won't ever get this bad. It just won't sink in. This thing keeps jumping on me. Until it direct, it won't sink in until it directly affects them. Right. Because it's a slow crawl. But for whatever reason, in the past years, things have escalated. And it may go back down to a slow roll and you have to watch it. it I think it's a living, breathing thing and everything doesn't go according to plan because they're going to measure how much resistance they have. And so it may go on the back burner and they may initiate something else. But rest assured, once attention is split or people get too old and the young doesn't listen because they're indoctrinating our children to all this stuff. You know, what is the, the Freudian thing where by the time a child is five, year old, five years old, he is going to be who he's going to be. That's, that's what a lot of psychologists say, that uh, Freud came up with it. And so that's why they're hitting your children younger and younger all the way to toddlers with this wokeism crap and this accepting trans and gays and all that because they got to get them young because the time that they're five, they are who they are. And that's what they realize, that five-year-olds and older – a majority of them are resisting. Now, if you look at the generations, you notice that more and more are this way or that way, but they got to get them early. That's why they're subjecting them to this and they're sexualizing them and they're doing all that. They're, they're doing it so early because they're sickos, yes, but they got to get them before their personality is fully developed into what it's going to be. Kingdom Lum also said, my wife verified the $1,000 limit through her boss's aunt who lives in the UK, and she confirms this. Yeah, yeah. They won't tell us, though, but it's coming. Brian says, he knows one of those rhinos. I know you do. You probably know pff, 100 or more, <laughs> especially in this state that we lost. You know, it's, it's turning blue by the day. And Kingdom Lum, this thing keeps jumping on me. We need to hold out elected hold our elected officials' feet to the fire on principles that strengthen this nation. America first popul policies, populism, for sure, and the Constitution. And Brian says Chuck needs to go. Yes, he absolutely does. And the the one from Dalton needs to go as well. You know, the one that's making all this money via his position, using his clout and his position to get what he wants. You should check out his scorecard. Both of them were pretty low for Republicans. They were on par with a lot of the Democrats. Some of the Democrats in the House, in the Atlanta House, had better scores than they do on conservatism. That should tell you everything you need to know. Kingdom Love. 
we will be at kinetic war before the 2024 election. That's my prediction. I, if they're already calling, I, you may have missed it, but they are already calling on evacuation strategies for Taiwan. If they're already doing that, then at best, at best 90 days out. But they're, the thing about that island in Taiwan and where they want to strike, there's a short period where the China Seas kind of chill out and it makes it accessible to them. That generally most of the time throughout the year, it's rough seas around it. And that's why they're so well protected and insulated. But whenever it's calm seas, that's when we're going to see it. Maybe this year, maybe next year. But I want to say around this time of year and close to what we're heading into summer, maybe late summer, which they're south of the equator. I'll have to look. I, I can't remember that. I know they're close to the equator, so they may follow along the same seasons that we do. You know, everybody south of this equator is on the complete opposite season we are. Brian, if I was in right now, I would be getting my ass out. Joe's military is sucking right now. It's been a slow crawl on that, man. Obama has made so many high appointees, and they're slowly turning it. I highly recommend, if you're a book-reading man or if you like Audible and listen to audiobooks, you need to look up The Irresistible Revolution by Matthew Lohmeyer. He was commander of the Space Force. He's a big pro-Trump guy. And he went to Trump multiple times explaining how the military was now communist. And the dude had been in the Air Force for years, for decades, decades and decades. And when his book came out, Biden was in, you know, 2020 happened. And his book came out in 21 and they retired him. They fired him for his book, calling out the military for what it was. Every bit of it's true. He dives deep into the weeds on stuff to get your understanding. And it, it's helped me understand a lot what's going on. And he mainly wrote it for people that have been in and are still in the military because only they can change this. And then Brian said, when is enough enough? We all talk about this downfall that is going on now, but it's continuing to get worse. Exactly. With everything, the border, security, the corruption of our government, the Department of Justice, all the rest. I mean, I don't, we, we the people have to come up and we got to go... The first thing we have to do is we're going to have to go to our elected officials and say, you're, you're, we're going to remove you from office if you don't start doing what we want you to do, what the general consensus of your constituents want you to do. Brian says, I know what you're talking about, and I'll get with you soon with the next weekend. Brian says, that's exactly what the Hitler regime did. Exactly. And he also says, never spend a penny at his places to... He, pay, he pays the way to keep his position. Yeah. He said, I need that book. Yeah. It, and that goes for the rest of you. Matthew Lohmeyer, it's called the Irresistible Revol Revolution. He was commander of the Space Force. You know, the thing, the branch that Trump started. He was commander of it. And he called out and Trump was actually doing, he goes to explain a lot of things Trump was doing behind the scenes and that he actually did. And you can look up their legit that he did to combat wokeism and try to stop this but as soon as biden got back in there they continued the obama move they continued what obama had already set in place and probably bush before him you know he's playing nice with those guys he's playing awfully awfully nice and the whole bush regime is you know i don't know his dad probably uh probably killed kennedy who knows who knows and that's another one i'm watching even though he's a democrat is uh robert f kennedy jr yeah, I hate the way his voice is and whatever's wrong with him, but I hear him out, and if the guy keeps on going, the Democrats are going to kill him. I don't know if he understands the party that he's with. Just because he's one of them don't mean that they won't offer you. I mean, look what happened with Clinton, you know, and Kennedy Jr., JFK Jr. I mean, a mysterious plane crash in the middle of the ocean when I wasn't even supposed to be flying over the ocean. Who knows? All right, folks, we're at an hour. That's all I got for you. Please, if you agree with things that I am saying, I want more like-minded people to come to the fold and have these conversations with you. I'd love to see you start up a live. Let me know because I will be there to watch it. I try to watch everybody's live. Even if I can't watch your live live, I do go back and watch it. But please, and check out NURAC.org. I post daily Intel updates. There's an awesome one on there now about the Minuteman rifle and a guide how to set it up. So if you're into Second Amendment items like this one behind me here, you definitely want to check that out. If you're into preparedness, you want to check it out. 
pretty much if you are like minded as I am, I have created this website, NURAC.org, to assist people like us. I actually use it. I built it as a tool for myself, and I said, you know what? I can share this with other people, and they can get intel. And my wife even said it the other day that something came across the news, and she's like, you posted this in one of your intel reports five days ago, and it's just now hitting the news exactly. You need to think what just 24 to 48 hours of news that you get before the masses get could do for you and your family. You need to think about that. That's why I do this tool. Because I wanted a place that I can compile things going on and I can go back and look at it now and I don't have to search because you know what happens and I'll, I'll get off my soapbox here in a minute. But I want to explain why I'm doing this. Why it's a little bit for me, but it's for everybody. is because these articles disappear and they change over time. Nothing on the internet can't be erased or rerouted. And so by doing this and doing this and creating these, it's creating a catalog so we can go back and see. Because it's a small op, it's not AI or computer controlled or anything like that. So they're not going to be able to change it. They're not going to be able to change the Intel reports. They're going to be there as long as I leave them there. So I do these things so you can kind of get an alert before news is news, essentially. All right, y'all. It's Monday. It's over with. I hope you have a good rest of the week. I hope you do some productive things and you hit your goals for the week. Thank you for tuning in and hearing me out. Y'all have a good one.